Hello everyone and welcome back uh, to another Victober video. Happy Victober to you. And I am continuing my tour through my Victorian books. I hope that you are enjoying this. Uh, the next that I have is a very 1980s edition. It's, this is a Dover paperback of Rachel Ray by Anthony Trollope. This is a um, Trollope I have not read yet, but I have only heard wonderful things. So I'm very excited to give this a try at some point. Um, there are no, yeah, no illustrations in this one. Um, and it is pretty short Trollope, which is when you're looking at Victorian fiction, it's always nice if you can find something that's on the shorter end. It is less than 400 pages. Um, what I love is at the back, it says a catalog of selected Dover books in all fields of interest. Um, so yeah, there's a bunch of nonfiction back here that uh, something on wood carving, things that I, I wouldn't really um, be interested in. So yes, here's Rachel Ray, and hopefully I will get to it at some point. Uh, then I have this uh, beloved edition, uh, it's vintage classics of Dombey and Son. And I love that this one does include the illustrations. And this was so fun. So I, the very first Victober, I read Dombey and Son. And uh, that Victober concluded with, I met up with some booktube friends in New York City. Um, and we went to The Strand. And here was this edition of Dombey and Son after I had fallen completely in love with this book. And there it was waiting for me and I snapped it right up. I really, really wanted it. And so I was delighted that it was there and that this has illustrations. And this is, I'm hoping that this Victober is when I reread this. So hopefully that's happening. And I just really love this uh, edition. Then we have a book that I found at a library book sale for I'm pretty sure 50 cents. Uh, it is a little rough uh, uh, what do I want to, worse for the wear. That's what I'm trying to say. The Little Lame Prince and the Adventures of a Brownie by Dinah Maria Mullock Crake. So last year I did a review of The Little Lame Prince and, um, Dinah Crake's other books, um, which is John Halifax, A Gentleman. And then, oh, I can't remember the name of the other one. I tried both of them and could not get on with her writing. And so when I saw this, I thought, you know what, why don't I just try it? It's 50 cents. Maybe since it's a very different kind of story, I'll love it. And I fell so in love with it because over recent years, I have come to really appreciate fairy tales and folklore. And this just felt so whimsical and um, really moving and beautiful. Uh, so I just, I can't recommend this story enough. And then it was really fun because I was telling my dad about the Little Lame Prince. And then he said, oh, you know what? I remember in third grade, there was another um, author whose last name was Mullock and they read, uh, my teacher read The Adventures of a Brownie and we had so much fun um, listening to that story. And I, so I brought this out. I was so excited to show him. That's the same edition and it includes that. So I haven't yet read The Adventures of a Brownie, but my hope is, my plan is that this Victober, I'll be reading this collection aloud to the boys. Um, I am very, very eager to finally share Treasure Island with Peter, but my dad um, is really confident that it would be best if I waited till Peter was 10. So that will be next Victober and we can finally read Treasure Island together. But for now, The Little Lame Prince is just lovely. Um, and I'm really excited to be sharing that with the boys and enjoying the, the pictures. It's very um, kind of Art Nouveau style illustrations. And let's see, next, I have this very slim volume of the Oxford World Classics, uh, Jezebel's Daughter. This is one that I've started a couple times and I have not been feeling it. At some point, I will read this, but right now I'm feeling fairly unmotivated, especially because the last um, Wilkie Collins I read, I really did not enjoy. So I just need a little bit of time and then I will come back to this. I will read it at some point. Uh, the next one is a Trollope, another one that I haven't read, The American Senator. This got some positive reviews on Bookstagram, so I just snapped up this used copy and um, haven't read it yet. Uh, this is a uh, middling length. It's about 600 pages, but for Victorian novels, that's not, not too bad, not too shabby. I don't know much about this plot, and I'm okay not knowing much. Uh, the next one that I have... Um, kind of a different kind of book. Um, and that is Landscapes with Figures, Selected Prose Writings of Richard Jeffries. So he was a naturalist um, from uh, the Victorian era and wrote uh, just different uh, observations about uh, nature. And um, I'm really curious to read. So uh, Rooks Returning to Roost, uh, Wind Anemones, The Fish Pond, 
A Brook London Trout, Mind Underwater, The Modern Thames, Trees About Town, Nightingales. It could be really boring. I don't know. But yeah, it, it was it was articles that he wrote. So this one, it says first published in Good Words, February 1882, and then collected in The Open Air, 1885. So I'll be curious what I think of it. His writing is supposed to be really beautiful. Then I have the love letters of Elizabeth Barrett and Robert Browning. And I have not picked this up. It's one that I hope to get to. I think this would be a really fun Valentine's Day read. Um, so maybe that's when I'll read it. Um, but I think after I got it, I saw some reviews that said these letters are not very romantic. Um, <laughs> so that was a little bit off putting. It does have uh, these that are in there periodically. So I will see when I finally get to their love letters. Oh my goodness. So this was such the undertaking, The Ring and the Book by Robert Browning. I read this with Roz from Scally Dandling about the books. It is about a real murder that happened and the trial was huge um, in, is it Venice? Um, Florence. Um, and yes, it's about uh, Count Guido Frances Francescini. Um, he was accused of the murder of his wife and, and he owns up to it. He doesn't deny that he did it, but he basically thinks he's justified because he says that she was having an affair. Um, and it was really brutal. So she and her two parents were murdered. Um, and so it's a true crime kind of poem. Um, so it is, it's really intense emotionally, but also what was so challenging is it's so dense. Roz was really helpful as I was reading this. Now, what is a crying shame is only until the very end did I realize that there are copious notes. And I did not know that. So after I finished this, I was like, I'm never reading this again. But now thinking about it, it was such an amazing and powerful experience. Maybe in a decade, I'll be able to be willing to revisit it again. Uh, then I have this copy that I'm not super enthusiastic about. It's The Moonstone by Wilkie Collins, but it's a copy. I can't really be mad about it. This, um, I do love this painting, I will say. I don't know if I can figure out what painting it is. Um, Bantam Classics, that's what this edition is. Let's see. Um, it doesn't say, oh, the cover is a uh, painting by Atkinson Grimshaw. It doesn't say what the name of the painting is though. Huh. So yes, that's The Moonstone, which is a book that I enjoyed. Although last Vic, uh, last December, it was a, the Patreon group read and I ended up being in a mystery reading slump, which is such a shame because it was during Cloak and Dagger Christmas, my mystery readathon that I am one of the hosts of. And um, I read several bad mysteries. And so then it just put me off reading mysteries. Uh, here we have, um, and I'm looking at, I have a bookmark in here. Um, I don't know what that's from. Uh, but here we have uh, George Moore's Esther Waters. This is a book that Katie from Books and Things, I think pretty sure has enjoyed. And it's one that I just haven't felt motivated since I bought it. I haven't felt motivated to pick it up. Uh, I think it's going to be pretty bleak. So maybe that's part of what's putting me off. Um, but I feel like it's all how the bleak is done. You know, like I love Wuthering Heights. Um, Elizabeth Caskell does bleak sometimes and I can be on board George Eliot. Uh, so I just know it's a, I think it's a fallen woman kind of story. Uh, James Joyce said it was the best novel of modern English life. Um, so we will see. Yeah, a mother, story of a mother's fight for the life of her illegitimate son. Um, that should be interesting. Okay, this one, I have very mixed feelings about it. Every Girl's Duty by Alice Miles. This is an actual diary of a Victorian debutante. And this one, unfortunately, I was very put off continuing because she is such a snob. Like, I don't know how else to say it. And I don't think I should be very surprised. But now this will lead into contrasting with Maud, the illustrated diary of a Victorian woman. Um, in this story, she's just talking about like, it's like people are pawns to her. And it was just very, very off putting to me. Um, so I was like, I'm not really enjoying getting to know you, Alice Miles. Um, I'll continue with it at some point And, um, I will finish it because there are some very funny parts. That's the thing that took me off guard is when I first started, I was like, this is hilarious. I am loving this. And then the further I continued, I was more like, oh, wow. You know, you don't, you aren't always the most likable person. Um, but now contrast that with Maud, where I was like, I would love to know you. I want to be friends with you. We would have been tight if we had known each other. 
And also this is such a visual feast as you go in. She was an amateur painter and I just love seeing all the paintings. This is one I just, whenever I think about it, I feel like rereading it. And um, I don't always because I just, you know, read other books, but this is one I really highly recommend. Um, it just between the beautiful art and then her very winsome personality, I find it so endearing. Um, so yeah, I really, really love this. Uh, okay, then we have um, Deerbrook by Harriet Martineau, one of my all-time favorite Victorian books. I really love this painting. This is a generic painting that's put on there, but it really fits for the story. So I do not mind it. Um, it says the painting is The Sisters by Frank Stone. Uh, so I'm if the painting really fits, I don't mind then. Um, yeah, the story of two sisters when they move into a town um, where they don't know anyone. And it's highly enjoyable. Uh, then we have um, the sequel to The Story of the Treasure Seekers by E. Nesbitt. This is the would-be goods. So I definitely want at some point to get a copy of The Story of the Treasure Seekers. And I just love this art. This is a puffin classic. And it is the very endearing story of the Bastable family and all of the scrapes that they get into. So uh, last year I read The Railway Children and I came out thinking like, that was charming, but they were too well behaved. <laughs> and I was just very charmed by the Bastable family and they always mean well when they get into their scrapes. So I cannot talk this series up enough. It's so good. Um, the one thing I will say is uh, that I haven't read the third book, which is called The New Treasure Seekers, I think, but it has a very charming Christmas chapter right at the beginning, and I actually read it aloud for a project last year. Um, so really want to get, I would love to get a matching, actually, matching Puffin edition of The Treasure Seekers. Uh, then I have this, uh, what is it? What is this? Uh, Oxford. This is like a 90s, I think, Oxford classic of the Woodlanders. This is a book I want to come back to. I didn't really connect with the characters in this, but I know it's very loved by Hardy fans. So at some point, I will revisit the Woodlanders. I don't know when, but I do actually really like this cover. I think it's pretty. Um, this painting, it says it's The Jewel Box by John Collier. Um, so yeah, one that um, I enjoyed his writing, but didn't feel totally blown away by it and it's worth me returning to. Uh, okay, then I have this um, Penguin Clock Found Edition, and look at this. This is just from being on the shelf. I haven't even had this a ton. That's why I wish Penguin Clock Found people would like figure out how to make it stay better. Um, so this is Goblin Market and Other Poems by Christina Rossetti. This was the first Victorian poetry that I just fell completely in love with. So now I have two Christina Rossetti <clears throat> po poetry editions. I read this a few Victobers ago and just loved it. So her poetry, I really connect with and I love. Um, yeah, very, very enjoyable. Um, then we have uh, a very worn copy of A Ch Child's Garden of Verses by Robert Louis Stevenson. Read this loud to the boys. We, we've read through this actually a couple times and I really love his poetry. I find it so enchanting um, and just really captures the spirit of childhood. And um, there's something about his poetry. I just love it. So uh, there have been several Robert Louis Stevenson books that I have loved, and I'm looking forward to continuing um, through his through his library, um, through his bibliography, I think that's what it is. Um, and yeah, would just love to, um, would love to continue through it. Um, then we have, the last one I'll show you is the Barnes and Noble Classics Edition of Oliver Twist. This is one that Dickens I'll definitely reread at some point. Um, it's been a long time since I've read it um, and I really enjoyed it when I did read it. Uh, so yeah, hopefully sooner rather than later. Um, and it was just, it's very uh, twisty turny towards the end. And I love that. I love how Dickens is good at that. Uh, then we have here um, The Burglary or A Burglary or Unconscious Unconscious Influence by Amy Dillwyn. This is a really just charming little gem of a book all about this small town and there's a burglary that happens in all of the kind of, um, what do I want to say, like pondering and like guessing like, ooh, who did it? Who did it? Who did it? Um, so it's really a fun, compelling read. Um, not the most strong characterization I've ever read, but if you want something amusing and diverting, this is a good one. Okay, that is the end of part three. This is turning into quite the series. Uh, I hope you are enjoying it. 
Thank you for watching, and I will be back with another Victober video soon. Bye!